Dom Giordano on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. All right, good Thursday, everyone. You know uh, what's trending all over the place. And Dr. Fauci's out there on one of his biggest media tours imaginable. But we have with us the guy who, back in March, we were talking about these emails because of the great work, the unrelenting work of Judicial Watch and the head guy there, Tom Fitton. Tom's with us in Philadelphia again. Hey, Tom, welcome in immediately before we got your email. We thought about you guys and the work that you do. Are you satisfied now that we've gotten to the bottom of it with Dr. Fauci or no? No, we haven't. Uh, okay. You know, the problem is that Fauci and his allies prevented any discussion of this issue about the origins at a time where the discussion might have been able to get key information out there. You know, mm-hmm. admittedly, you're dealing with the Chinese communists. You know, that's difficult enough. But when you have all of the federal government and their allies in big tech suppressing any discussion of this and in big science, uh, you know, the, wh- We're stuck now. A year later, now we're being told by the media facts that have been out there since day one and facts that have been hidden personally by Fauci. You know, to be clear, we've been suing for records about this issue for um, a a long time now. We've been asking under FOIA. And one of the reasons they've been stalling the release of the records, they've told us, Dom, is that because Fauci has to personally review the material. Wow. So this material that just came out this year or just in the last few weeks, I wonder if Fauci personally reviewed that because that's what was happening in our litigation. We've asked for the same type of material. We haven't seen it yet. So what's Fauci's role in suppressing the release of this information? Yeah. Now, it's been bandied about, Tom. Do you think there's potentially anything illegal here or at least something that could be looked at in that vein? Well, folks have raised concerns about his testimony. I, I don't know. It's hard to make these perjury cases. And yeah, Fauci's smart enough to have uh, the language necessary probably to avoid being accused outright of lying. Uh, but, uh, you know, if there's a conspiracy to obstruct an investigation of this, you know, that might be serious. Uh, in the least, I don't think he can be talking about this issue anymore on behalf of the American taxpayer yes, exactly. and being the number one guy. It doesn't mean he gets fired. It just means he gets – he's no longer the leader, and someone else needs to step up if they can find someone competent and trustworthy, which is difficult to do in the CDC and the agencies because they're really so corrupted. And as I've long been saying – you know, any more than we should trust the FBI, DOJ, CIA, should we be trusting CDC and and these other big health agencies that are run by deep staters as well? Deep state. Let's go on that line. So uh, you see Fauci as a deep stater here. I mean, I never thought about that until now. Uh, and the CDC, you believe there are people there that are there forever that just have their own agenda? Oh, sure. I mean, you can talk about talk to the former Trump officials who used to work there. They'll tell you about all of that. And Fauci's emails demonstrate that, you know, there were these institutional activities that were going on that he was concerned about. I mean, the one email showing where he sends urgently um, a material related to the gain of function research involving uh, his agency and others, you know, that was prior to anything being known about this. Uh, he knew early on that there was an institutional exposure, and that's the deep state approach. They've got interests separate and apart from the American people. It's either personal or institutional or agenda-driven. And whatever Fauci's agenda was at the time, unfortunately, became the agenda for the federal government generally because of the outsized political influence he wielded there. You know, I'm I'm frustrated because, you know, I would I I just asked sent out a tweet saying how interesting it was that Fauci had sent an email to Hillary Clinton saying that she loved her he loved her or something like that. I don't know if it was to Hillary but one of her top aides. And I said isn't that interesting? Well, I that tweet was the subject of attacking piece hit pieces in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Daily Beast, mm-hmm. you name it. Because I just asked a question about Fauci and then we sued for records and we get attacked. 
And it's it's so you we're know, doing you the guy, work you guys that are any indi- citizen you, you, should be able to do, and we're getting right. attacked by the media that's now pretending right. to be interested in this issue. Yeah, uh, thank God you guys are there because I don't know the energy, the resources you need. It's it's wearying to, and it's got to feel good though when all that we thought does come out in this manner. Back to the deep state part of it. I get that. I'm in agreement with it. You know what's still surprising me, Tom, and maybe not with you. You see it up close more in Washington. It's one thing to be uh, involved in certain things where there's agenda, money, something like that. But when it comes to something this consequential and it comes to this existential threat, the Communist Chinese Party, even I put down the cynical hat for a moment and say, we still have people that are going to front for China. They're the NBA. They're apparently people at the CDC and others. We still haven't rooted them out in a unified manner. This is a threat to the world's existence here, or the world being free, and that's the Communist Chinese Party. No, and their influence here in the United States, as you as you highlight, is significant because there have been major U.S. corporations who have decided that the market and benefit they get from having access to the Chinese market outweighs their allegiance to the United States and the values that we hold here. You know, when we were kind of battling, kind of is a kind of a long word, when we were battling the Soviet Union, you know, there weren't many companies that were doing business in the Soviet Union. It was it was it was seen as really problematic to do business with the Soviet Union. That's not true in the case of China. And it doesn't mean everyone doing business in China is a bad guy and is unpatriotic and such. But that's got to be now part of the calculation in doing business with China is that are you aiding and abetting a threat to the liberal order? And I use liberal in the good sense of the word of but uh, A, the United States of America and our constitutional system and the safety and security of the rest of the world that relies on that where we're trying to promote openness, transparency, the rule of law. China's China opposes all of that and, and frankly has contempt for it. I think that's a great analogy. I'm going to use it myself. That's a highway. I think of exactly what you said. Yeah, the Soviet Union. This this is uh, on the grand scale but just on the everyday scale of how insidious it is, the NBA, you know, I, a big basketball, the stuff that we see and how blatant this is, it has to be seen in, in the public is you're over the line. You got to redeem yourself and get out of this. So what do you do at Judicial Watch now next around Fauci or any of this stuff? Uh, Tom, what are you guys up to right now? Well, we keep pushing for the information. We have lawsuit. We have a lawsuit ongoing for documents about the grants at issue. You know, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the documents that have been released. We had obtained documents last year, Dom, showing that the WHO agencies were trying to put out, wanted and did put out press releases that went out of its way, that went out of their way to praise China. And that was the specific goal. We're going to put out this release, and no, you know, we get specially appraising China. And you know who approved that for us? Fauci. Wow. It's it's amazing. So where do we find? What's the best place to find you and Judicial Watch? And if people are inclined to help with uh, resources, because uh, you know it's the deep state. It's just the um, pedestrian institutional Washington that looks the other way. It's never ending. I, I don't know that it will ever end. And uh, when you wear the Superman shirt in some pictures, I can see why. So where do we go to help? Uh, we go uh, go to judicialwatch.org, uh, judicialwatch.org. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I've been locked over, I locked out of Twitter over COVID. Uh, but, uh, you know, all we can do is what we can do. And, you know, that may sound trite, Dom, but that's not what most of Washington does. They don't do what they can do. They don't want to do what exactly. they can do. Uh, Judicial Watch has access to the courts under the law, FOIA. Uh, you know, we can educate people about what we find, and we're going to we're going to exercise that right, that precious right we have to petition our government and go to court and hold them accountable uh, until we get as many answers as we're able to reasonably. Absolutely. Tom Fitton, thank you very much, as always, particularly on a day like this. Thanks for joining us. 
You're welcome. Tom Giordano, weekdays 9 till noon on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Life can take you in many directions. No matter where you're going, we're with you for the ride and help you lead your life with convenient banking, great rates, and friendly service. Jovia Financial Credit Union. Bank on the bright side. Bank on the bright side.